Good morning, YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five principles for a big bench press and even bigger pecs. So I'm going to be continuing the programming series and giving you more information into my thought process. But today, I just wanted to give you a quick, simple, easy video that you can use today because today is International Bench Press Day. Every single Monday, the bench press area is going to be full. And <clears throat> I want to give you some information that will help you in the long run. So these are things that I personally advocate to all of my clients. These are things that I have practiced since I started working out. And I can, with near certain near certainty, relate these things with a lot of the benefits that I have received from them. So let's look at number one. Number one, take your back training seriously. One thing that I do not, for the life of me, understand is how we know that, you know, you always hear people are like, oh, people in the gym are always so focused on what they can see in the mirror. And yeah, that's cool. But here's the thing. I'm very happy to say that it is now kind of mainstream to want big traps. I'm very happy to say that it is now kind of um, traps of the new abs is something that I'm starting to hear a bit more often. And that's great. But here's the thing. When it comes to trap training, it's just shrugs. All I see is shrugs. One thing I want to advocate to you is rowing. You should be able to row just as much as you bench. So if you have a 315 bench, I expect you to have a 315 row. Barbell row, penlay row, T-bar row, seal row, doesn't really matter. I just think that when it comes to your back training, you generally want to have just as much pulling volume. And for this one, I just mean volume. So just sets and reps. You want volume to be about equal to all your pressing throughout your week or more, maybe like 1.5 or two times as much. And then from there, you also want your top end strength on your back to be more, if not equal than your bench. So that's number one, take your back training seriously, get your back as strong as possible. Now, here's why. If your back is strong, the way that I think about it, right, is you can't move a weight you can't stabilize. You can't move a weight that you cannot physically support. Your back, since it's like what's in contact with the bench, is what's giving you that base of support. So bigger base of support, a bigger press. So that's one. The next thing is injuries don't just happen. Injuries don't just occur. They accumulate, like, let's say, wear and tear over time. And here's the thing. Weak things break. So if you have a weakness in your back and you're doing all this pressing, you're developing a weakness within your shoulders that's eventually going to pay um, that you're going to have to pay the price for eventually. So the stronger you have all the structures involved, the better you're going to be in the long run, which leads me into my second point, which is take your tricep training seriously. When was the last time you actually tried to hit a PR on a tricep isolation movement? So let's say tricep pushdowns, tricep pulldowns, whether with a rope or a bar, or maybe skull crushers or JM press. When was the last time you actually treated your triceps as a main mover. The thing is, when it comes to a lot of accessory movements, we often think that, oh, we're just trying to like flood in like easy volume, which sometimes is necessary. It's something it's something that I actually advocate for, but there should still be the mind for progression. It's not just, okay, I'm doing tricep extensions because I can't do more bench. It's you're doing tricep extensions because it's going to be easier to recover from progressing on tricep extensions than it would be more bench. So it's not just easy token volume. It's also trying to progress on that as well when possible. So you want to actually try to increase your 8 to 12 rep max on these movements, maybe even 12 to 15 rep max on these movements. So that way you can spend spend more time with a certain weight for longer and keep trying to add weight. But regardless, you want to be adding weight to these smaller movements. And let me tell you, you... I know for a fact, a lot of you will think that, oh, if I just uh, do JM pressing, close grip pen, um, pressing and everything like that, I'm going to be taken care of. If I do these pin presses, these um, these condensed range of motion, these board presses and stuff like that, that that's going to be all I need. Now, do, are those movements helpful? Yes, definitely. But for the purpose of power building, for the purpose of building an impressive physique and having strength that matches, what I would rather see people do is just get everything involved as strong as possible. And that's why take your tricep training seriously. 
Don't be trying to rely on these niche movements, these um, compensatory strength strategies. Um, don't be trying to think about cutting the range of motion. If you want to be maybe like the best in powerlifting, yeah, sure. But this is not what that's for. This is a power builder's approach to having big chest, big bench, right? So the next thing I'm going to advocate to you is that I want you to control every single rep and pause every single rep. So time under tension, I, I kind of already talked about how I think it's kind of like a waste of time, right? Time under tension is kind of a waste of time because if all you focus is the time under tension and not the tension itself, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. Now, is that advice or is that me advocating that you just jackhammer your weights and look like a jackass? No. What I'm trying to say is that you, as long as you have a mod modicum of control of each rep, that's enough. You don't need to be doing this really weird thing where you're just lowering it slow like one, two. You don't need to fucking do that stupid shit. But what I am saying is that you can't just like, you know, bang it on your chest, like knock the wind out of yourself and then trampoline the weight up either. So oftentimes we like to focus so much on the fringe extremes of th certain things that we forget that there is a middle path. And that middle path is literally just being a normal human being, just lowering in our control, pausing it and then going up. That is literally it. So. I want you to control every rep and I want you to pause every rep. So oftentimes the reason why I recommend these two things is just for one simple reason. People are always looking for some type of variation. This kind of leads into my previous point, right? Or from my previous point where you're always thinking about, well, what if I do close grip? What if I do wide grip? What if I do this? What if I do that? I'm trying to get everything as strong as possible. And I'm just like, yeah, sure. That's, that's all fine and dandy and that's great. But here's the thing. If your back, your triceps, and your form and rep quality is shit, you don't need variation. You just need to do what you're doing right now better. And this leads me into my next point, which is use good form. I cannot tell you enough just because, so there's a couple things with, um, with the bench press, right? For one, the bodybuilders got it right. For two, as far as like training principles and everything like that. And for two, if you are a commercial gym like lifter, if you are someone who is interested in hypertrophy but also love getting stronger, you know, being a power builder and all that, you want to lift, you want to use the bench press and lift more like a bodybuilder than you do a power lifter. If all you care about is maximizing weight on the bar and trying to get every advantage you possibly can to lift the most amount of weight, that's not going to give you the best results as far as muscle building. I, for me personally, this is something that kind of, kind of, uh, slowed my progress down a bit, but I'm not really too regretful of it, quite honestly, because one thing I told myself was I'm only going to be as strong. I want my strength and my size to go hand in hand for this movement. I'm not going to widen out my grip unnecessarily just to cut the range of motion to increase my bench press one rep max. Would that have translated into muscle gains? Yeah, sure. Definitely. More than likely. But at the same time, the reason it does that is because I'm lifting more weight through a shorter range of motion. So it's kind of like compensation. But here's, here's my logic. If I can lift that amount of weight through a longer range of motion, even if it, take, if it takes me longer to get there, the results, in my opinion, would be far better, which is why I kind of take that, uh, I take that L or however you want to like frame it. But when I say good form, I want you to use just enough of an arch in your low back to protect your lower back. I want you to use just enough tuck in your elbows to protect the shoulders. And I do want you to use leg drive. If you do all of these things, you are going to be getting the benefits of, you know, like what the power lifters have gotten right from the bench press. But if you apply a bodybuilder's form, then it's only going to be um, like just positives for you, right? So use good form, train it like a bodybuilder, but implement an arch, implement a elbow tuck and don't flare out your elbows thinking you're going to get a better stretch on the pec um, and use leg drive. But like I said, don't be trying to maximize your form and maximize your leverages just to lift more weight. No, you want to have that good range of motion, but you also want to stay safe. So use good form. And then for the fifth tip, I want you to undulate volume and intensity. This is where the idea of bodybuilders got it right comes from. Bodybuilders, the bench press is one of their favorite movements. When it comes to like me, when I started like watching powerlifting content and everything like that, strength training content, the bench press was usually a lift that was 
let's say in most programs there maybe once a week or twice a week and if it was there once or twice a week you have a heavy day and you have a light day you have a day where you kind of do technique work and you and then you have a day where you actually go hard on it and then it's either that or you go into another method where it's every other time you press you switch between overhead press and barbell bench pressing which there's nothing wrong with there is an advantage to doing that but here's the thing I noticed the best amount of gains for myself and for anyone that I've ever coached when you do use a two times a week approach for the bench press. And with that two times a week approach, you have one day that is heavier and one day that is more uh, volume driven. So you have a volume day and an intensity day. You have a day where you're sticking primarily with maybe a one to five rep max and then doing all your rep work in the let's say six to 10 rep range. That's a good way to kind of handle an intensity day. Like generally speaking, I can break this down like even more so, but today, you know, I'm trying to make it shorter than <laughs> 20 minutes. Okay. Then you have a volume day where you have maybe you're in the 10 to 20 rep range for most things. You're not going above, uh, let's say 75, 80 ish percent. So you're, you're taking things much closer to failure. But like I said, you're still keeping in mind everything else. Your accessories are going to be focused on your back and your triceps in addition to your chest. You're going to be controlling every single rep and you're going to be using good bodybuilder form while taking a page out of the powerlifters book using an arch, using uh, like tucking your elbows and uh, using leg drive. Now, I'm going to give you one extra tip, okay? If you really, really want to have a big chest and want to leverage that size into um, more pressing strength, you need to do more than just bench. You do need to do your push-ups. You do need to use dips and dips kind of like it leads into the second point of taking your tricep training seriously. And you do need to overhead press. The overhead press gets a lot of bad, uh, I guess, <laughs> reputation as for its carryover to the flat barbell bench and Here's my thing with carryover. I feel like carryover is one of those things where it's very much focused on powerlifters because there is the economy of training, right? Where you have to make decisions that are going to benefit you. But here's the thing. Benefit does not equate to carryover. There are benefits to certain exercise that is not just carryover. Think about what I just recommended to you. I recommended to you to take your back training seriously and to take your tricep training seriously. If you take those things seriously, you're going to be taking time and effort away from something else, which could be just more specific bench press training but here's why i recommend it for one it's going to be easier to recover from for two it actually gives you a better result because you don't get better by what you do in the gym you get better by what you can recover from and if you get everything involved uh everything involved in a movement as strong as possible then you plug up any weaknesses and you're only as strong as your weakest link so if your bench press is going to be limited by something like your back or your triceps and these limitations they don't reveal themselves immediately oftentimes there's like this delay or this gap between weaknesses you've developed and then weaknesses that appear to your, yourself as a plateau or as an injury in the worst possible case which is why you want to train your back you want to train your triceps but like i said you're taking time away from something more specific you're taking time away from something that has more carryover but you're also taking time away from things that have a higher recovery cost. And like I keep saying, you don't get stronger by what you do in the gym. You get stronger by what you recover from. So you need to do your push-ups. You need to do your dips. You need to do your overhead pressing. Because if you do vertical pressing, if you do these other pressing variations, usually what ends up happening is that if you do more of these things, more of those movements that are not the bench press, it increases your mileage in the gym. It increases or decreases your mileage in the gym, I should say, because you're actually able to handle more training in the long run. If all you do is beat up your body and beat up your body and beat up your body day in, day out, week in, week out for years at a time on a very specific movement, yes, you're going to get very specific results, very specific gains from it. But like I said, you're going to run into a lot of issues as a result of neglecting all of these other presses. If you include overhead pressing, if you include dips, if you include push-ups, you're building on the structures you're, that are involved and you're able to stick with your training much longer than if you were just super specific. This is why peaking programs aren't great training programs. Programs that get the most strength out of you 
don't build the most strength. They get you prepared to show your best um, possible performance at that time. That's the benefit of using them. So <clears throat> that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Corosa King, StanStrength.com. Have a good day.